Jobs lured John Scully away from Pepsi-Cola to serve as Apple's CEO, asking, do you want to spend the rest of your life selling sugared water, or do you want a chance to change the world? Apple Computer's business division was focused on the Apple III, a failing iteration of the text-based computer. Simultaneously, the Lisa Group worked on a new machine that would feature a completely different interface and introduce the words mouse, icon, and desktop into the vocabulary of the computing public. In return for the right to buy $1 million of pre-IPO stock, Xerox granted Apple Computer three days access to the Park facilities. Park was a sub-research and development company. After visiting Park, they came away with new ideas that would complete the foundation for Apple's first graphical user interface computer. By 1984, Apple had proved twice over that it was a force to be reckoned with. It had taken on IBM, the biggest name in business computing, and acquitted itself admirably. The Apple I and II were resounding successes, but while the Apple III and Lisa had been remarkable failures, Apple needed another hit both to guarantee its future and to target the lower end of the market, which to date it had regularly ignored. That hit was the Macintosh, the machine that largely guaranteed the company's future. We'll always remember Steve Jobs as the man who launched the Macintosh.